Hype trains are just a natural part of all sports. Whether they're earned and you can see it all come to fruition with a championship or multiple championships, a dynasty, or if they're not necessarily earned or they don't end up coming to anything worthwhile. Hype trains are fun to watch, whether you want to see it for the success or the hatred of it, and NASCAR is no different whatsoever. And there's a lot of different hype trains that people will jump on in NASCAR. And today I want to look at a couple of these, starting with the tracks. Believe it or not, the venues of a NASCAR race do get their own hype train when it comes to tracks that we really love or tracks that maybe were gone and we want to come back well we're gonna as fans get behind it and there's been a couple in recent years that have been pretty big with this first off the nashville fairgrounds the fairgrounds were a track that was on nascar's schedule in the cup series until the 80s and have been a bit of a concern when it comes to just grassroots racing fans in general. Recently, people have really been pushing for SMI to get their efforts completed in bringing back this historic racetrack, one of the oldest on the planet, to NASCAR's top ranks. On top of that, you have a very similar story in the North Wilkesboro Speedway, except to a much more drastic degree on both ends of the story. North Wilkesboro was cut from the NASCAR schedule in 1996 due to expansionist efforts and from there basically laid dormant for the better part of 30 years. And during COVID, as well as other different points of time, people would try and bring it back. Dale Jr. trying to clean up the track and SMI after getting COVID money, being able to bring it back for the 2023 All-Star Race and hopefully making it a long-term stable part of the NASCAR schedule again. Recently as well, there's been Iowa. They had years of good hype when it came to Xfinity races being amazing there, but ultimately nothing came of it until this year, 2024, when it all of a sudden came to Cup. On the other end of it, you have the Kentucky Speedway. This was hyped up more by the industry, SMI, Daryl Waltrip, and others, and it was the first new track on the schedule in 2011 in a decade. But the hype died immediately with an awful showing of both bad racing and bad traffic outside of the track. But tracks aren't the only part of the competition that doesn't have to do with a person in particular that gains hype. You have manufacturers. First off, in 2001, there was Dodge. They had Evernham and Ganassi behind them, Evernham being the best crew chief in NASCAR in the 90s, and Ganassi being one of the most recognizable names in all of motorsports. They lagged behind, but with Team Penske, they were able to at least compete year in and year out by the end of their tenure, winning the 2012 championship on their way out. Toyota gained a ton of hype and a negative aspect of people basically hating on them saying they didn't belong in NASCAR because they weren't American enough. And with it, in 2007, their failure was greeted by many NASCAR fans with glee. But in 2008, it all paid off with JGR winning tons of races with Kyle Busch, and then Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin leading this team into the future, with different teams like Furniture Row, Michael Waltrip Racing, Red Bull, and nowadays 2311, as well as Legacy Motor Club, leading the way for the OEM. Speaking of 2311, the teams do gain some hype as well. MJ starting a NASCAR team is a big deal, and it was a big deal when it happened back at the start of the 2020s. Bubba Wallace also being signed right at the height of his non-NASCAR hype and fame made it only bigger. This team has been under a microscope, both because of those aspects and Denny Hamlin being so outspoken of a car owner. Make it clear, while MJ has his fingerprints on it, at least monetarily, Denny Hamlin's fingerprints are on it when it comes to the day-to-day operations. And teams can be super teams, and the hype can be gained there, like in the 2010s with JGR, as well as HMS a couple times, which we will talk about a little bit later in this video. Of course, outside of the sports competition in general, games have gained a lot of hype through the years. And there's been three in particular that, in my opinion, will define a hype train for a game. First off was NASCAR 2011, the game by Eutechnics. It had the greatest trailer ever. There's no other way to put it. And anyone who says that they weren't hyped after seeing that is just lying straight up to you. But when it was released, it was a sloppy mess and it did disappoint. While improved and the online play could be good for some, it was not what it was cracked up to be, especially after delays. 
Though in 2012's edition, Inside Line, it was much better, and that game, unfortunately for years, looked to be much overlooked. And then you have NASCAR Ignition, hyped to be the new era of NASCAR gaming, an escape from the mediocrity of the Heat series with motorsport games. And it turned into the worst NASCAR game ever with the worst release ever. It's coming. Physics! Physics! Now, we are currently in the midst of a hype train, for NASCAR 25 as it's labeled, the new era once more with iRacing, hoping to redeem the console gaming scene for NASCAR and have maybe the first year-over-year -year much better improved game since probably the Thunder series. And with iRacing at the helm, a lot of people are really excited for it. The only time will show whether or not this is a great game or another died-down hype train. But of course, the one part of the hype train that you want to look at and you see the most is the drivers. And there are two drivers in particular that I think make up both ends of the hype train when it comes to big name drivers. We have rookie hype trains. We've had times where rookies will jump up to the cup series and have maybe some good experience and good runs in the Xfinity and Truck Series. You got guys like Biffle, Truex, others like that in the 2000s that ended up panning out. Well, others like, say, Yaley or Stremme, who were hyped up at least by industry folk that didn't really make it as far in their careers. But two drivers, in my opinion, look the best when it comes to the hype train. First off, you have Kyle Larson. Larson looked to be a prodigy. I mean, guys even like Jeff Gordon were saying he was going to be the future of NASCAR, and it looked like with Ganassi, as he raised the team up from being mediocre to actually competing in the playoffs every year, that he'd be able to do so. But by 2020, it looked like he had hit a glass ceiling. So, in that time as well, a lot of the hype died down. And when he made his massive mistake and got indefinitely suspended by NASCAR that year, well, it looked to all be over, until he went to Hendrick Motorsports in 2021, where it looked that he had a new lease on life. He won the title, and 10 wins that season. It was incredible to watch, and you're hard-pressed to guess if there will ever be a season like it again. Larson delivered on every aspect, didn't matter what the type of racing there was, didn't matter what track they went to, and didn't matter what championship format they had. Larson was bound to win that championship. On the other end is Dale Earnhardt Jr. entering 2008. Heading out of 2007, Dale Jr. had the biggest hype train, in my opinion, in NASCAR history. With DEI, he had finished in the top five in points in three of the last five years. And while having two outlier seasons in comparison, those were outliers for his career, which at that point had been elite. While nowadays he's viewed differently as a driver overall because of his Hendrick tenure, he was an elite driver with DEI. He competed for the 2004 and 2006 championships as well, all the way to the season finale. And in this time, his 10 wins were tied with Matt Kenseth, a champion of the sport, for 7th most between 03 and 07. Beat by Jimmy Johnson, a champion. Jeff Gordon, a champion. Tony Stewart, a champion. Kurt Busch, a champion. Greg Biffle, who finished second in points in 2005 and was emerging as a great driver, and Ryan Newman, who was probably the only outlier of this group in this time. And they did this with Hendrick, Roush, Gibbs, and Penske equipment, while Dale Jr. did this with a dying Dale Earnhardt Incorporated, which barely could make enough horsepower for him to keep up without riding the high line. So, you can kind of see now that entering 2008, Jr. going to Hendrick Motorsports seemed like Kyle Larson going there. At this point, Junior had had more success than Larson in his career. And when he won two of the three events in Speed Weeks with a shootout and duel, well, it looked like he was only going to deliver more. Unfortunately, in the points racing season, well, he ended up only having one win between 2008 and 2012 at Michigan. And while we recovered in 2012 all the way through 2015, a lot of people do look at his career at Hendrick Motorsports as a failure, though he performed much better than most drivers ever would. So what's the moral of all of this? Is it that hype trains are just going to be around no matter what? Is it that some drivers fail, some drivers are good? What is it? I'd say it's this. Enjoy the train before it leaves the station, because you might look back fondly on it, but if you don't enjoy it in the moment, you're really missing out on the true fun aspect of it. So with that, I'll pass it on to you and ask what your favorite hype train is 
And until next time, have a good one.